Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number two from the June 2022 International A-Level Mechanics M1 paper. <clears throat> Here we have a question about a motorbike which is moving with constant acceleration. Okay, important word, constant acceleration, along a straight horizontal road. The motorbike passes a point P, and 10, second later, 10 seconds later passes a point Q. The speed of the motorbike as it passes Q is 28 meters per second. Given that PQ is equal to 22 meters, find the acceleration of the motorbike. Okay, so it's going along this road between P and Q. Say this is the point P at the beginning, and this is the point Q at the end. Let me change the color a bit. Okay, now... So, it's saying the speed of the motorbike as it passes Q is 28 meters per second. Because so at this point, speed is 28 meters per second. The distance between P and Q is 220 meters. So, this distance here is 220 meters. Okay, we also know that, let's say this is when time was zero at P, at Q, time was 10 seconds, okay, 10 seconds later. We don't know the speed of the motorbike at P or any other point. This is all the information we have, and we have to use this information to find the acceleration of the motorbike. So as we have constant acceleration in this whole section here, we can use the SUVAT equations. We can use SUVAT. And here we know S is 220 meters. We don't know what u is. We know v is 28 meters per second. We, we have to find what a is, and t is 10 seconds. So we've got to think about what equation we're going to use that involves s, v, a, and t. Okay, s, v, a, and t. So there's a few equations we can use. Now, one of the equations of motion is s equals vt minus a half a t squared. There's also s equals u t. Um, so this is yeah, v t minus a half a t squared. You also have u t plus a half a t squared. That's another one. Um, we could also use here, I guess, let's see if we know um, v equals u plus a t s v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s. Now, I think this is the one that we need to use because we have v, we have s, we have t, we have to find a. Right, so if we replace the S with 220 meters, 220, the V with 28, the T with 10, minus a half times A, which we have to find, times 10 squared. Okay, this will give us A. A is the only unknown. So we have 220 is equal to 280 minus, that's a half times 100, which is 50 minus 50A. So we can say 200, we can say 50A is equal to 280 minus 220, so 50A, 50A, sorry, 50A is equal to 60, so A is equal to 60 over 50, which is over 50, so that's going to be 1.2 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration of this throughout this whole journey. That's part A. Then part B says, find the distance traveled by the motorbike during the fifth second after passing B. During the fifth second. Now, this is the key in this question. And I'm sure a lot of people got caught out by this question. Um, it says, during the fifth second. Okay, so what does it mean during the fifth second? So let's, let's have a look at our little diagram again. Let's start it again. So you have P and Q. Now, we know that this is when time equals zero. We know this is when time equals 10. We know this is when the speed was 28 meters per second. Okay, we know the distance, as we said, was, the distance is, as we were told, 220 meters, the total distance between P and Q. Okay, so that's 220 meters. And we also know now that the acceleration is 1.2 meters per second squared for the whole journey. Now, during the fifth second, now the fifth second, 
you got the you know it's, it's moving along so you after one second that's this is during the first second okay and t equals one between zero and one that's during the first second and then between t equals one and t equals two this is during the second second and then between t equals two and t equals three that's during the that's during the third second so um that's during the first second during the second second during the third second okay so between t and three and t equals four that's during the fourth second right so that's the this is the first second this is the second second this is the third second this is the fourth second so during the fifth second means between t equals four and t equals five we've got to find the distance it's traveling during that fifth second all right so that's what we have to do here during this time here we've got to find how far it's traveled we need to find this distance here so we can do this in a number of ways um I, i'm guessing the easiest way that i can think of is to find the time taken for the first five seconds and the time taken it took to get uh, you know the first four seconds the distance is traveled in the first five seconds and the distance is traveled in the first four seconds okay and then subtract them so find its distance after five seconds and distance after four seconds and subtract them so the distance we need is the distance between these two this is the distance we need this is distance during the fifth second okay so we need to find how far it's traveled when t equals 5 and t equals 4 and subtract those two values and then we get the distance that we need so we can see that s equals uh, we can we can use the suva equation let's let's look at um, for for t equals 4 all right let's look at t equals 4 and then we look at t equals 5 and then we'll subtract the two values so when t equals 4 okay which is up to here okay what do we know well uh, we know that the distance is traveled is what we have to find. We don't know the initial speed. We don't know the final speed, but we know the acceleration is 1.2, and we know the time is 4 seconds. Okay? We know the acceleration and the time. Um, we don't know the distance. Okay? Um, we don't know the initial speed, the final speed. Um, we don't know that we have to find the distance. Right, so what we what we need to do is try and work out if we can work out what the initial speed is, we will have enough information to find what we need. Okay, so let's try to find the initial speed from the information that we have because we know the acceleration, we know the final speed, we know the time from p to q. So let's consider first from p to q to work out what the initial speed is. Okay, the speed at this point here. Okay, the speed when t equals zero. So let's look at P to Q first. So for P to Q, we have S equals 220. We have U equals what we want to find. Okay. We have V equals 28 meters per second. Now I'm considering P to Q. And A is 1.2 is a constant acceleration. And we know the time is 10 seconds. So we can quite easily find what U is. We can even use a very simple formula, V equals U plus AT. So we know that's 28 equals u plus 1.2 times 10 so you got 28 minus um that's going to be 12 so we can say u is equal to 28 minus 12 which is 16 meters per second so now i know that u is 16 meters per second so now i can use this equation to find s when time equals 4. so we've got u a and t I'm going to find S. So we have, we're dealing with S, U, A, and T. So we can use um, V squared equals V squared. No, we can use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So we know S is what we have to find. U is 16. T is 4. Okay and plus a half times a which is 1.2 times 4 squared so that's going to give us our answer for the the distance traveled at time equals 4 so you have 16 times 4 plus a half point five times 1.2 times the square of 4 which is 16 and that gives us 73.6, 73.6 meters is the distance when time equals 4. 
73.6 meters. And we can find the distance when t time equals 5. Okay, we need to find the distance when time equals 5 now. We, can, we need to find that. So we need to consider between, let's just go back to this again. We've got P and Q. We know that the initial speed is 16 meters per second. We know that the distance is traveled between after four seconds. When time equals four seconds, it's traveled a distance of, as we just worked out, that was 73.6. Okay, so that's 73.6 meters. We want to find how far it travels after five seconds. We know that acceleration is 1.2 meters per second squared. Okay, and um, yeah, so we have S, U, V, A, and T. We want to find the S here. This is up to from P to time equals 5. So U is 16. As you know, V we don't know. A is 1.2. And t is 5 seconds. So again, we can use the same formula. We can use the formula S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So S equals U, which is 16 times 5 this time, plus a half times acceleration, 1.2 times the time, 5 squared. And that's going to give me the distance traveled in the first five, after 5 seconds, basically. So we can just change this for instead of 16 that's going to be 5 squared which is 25 so it's the same formula except i'm changing um the time for 5 instead of 4 so it's it's going to be 16 times 4 far outside sorry 16 times one second 16 times 5 so that's ut plus a half times a times t squared and that gives us 95 meters. And for the other one, it was, and we had six, we had four instead of T, so that was of 16, just to make sure that I got that right. 16, and this was S equals U times T, so that was a four. And that gives us, hold on, U times T. Okay, 16 times 4, u times t plus a half, a t squared. That gives us, um, as we got before, 73.6. So the distance traveled up to the first four seconds was 73.6. Okay, so we can say that during the fifth second, during the fifth second, okay, it travels... It travels 95 minus 73.6, which is, so we do 95 minus this answer, which is 21.4 meters. Okay, so that's an um, important question here. I'm sure that many people got thrown off by this statement during the fifth second. It's not asking you to find the distance traveled after five seconds? No, during the fifth second. So between the time when it's four and the time when it's five seconds. That's what they're looking for. Just the distance traveled in this section here. All right? So that's very important. I think that and many people lost marks with that, that part of the question. Um, so, yeah, so the thing to realize here, we have constant acceleration throughout the whole of this journey. So therefore, we can use the SUVAT equations and we have to be careful where we use what Okay, one of the things we don't assume, we can't assume that it started with zero velocity. It doesn't mention that. It says it passes a point P. It doesn't mention what its velocity was or its speed was at P. So you don't assume that it has a zero in the beginning. Okay, we know the time is zero when it passes through P because that's where we're measuring the time from. That's one thing. And um, yeah, so we have to take each second section separately. So, you know, I use from P to Q 220 meters, S is 220 meters when we're considering from P to Q. But from P to the point when it reaches four, uh, after four seconds, I can't say that that's 220, of course. I can't use the same values of S here as I can here. Here I'm considering between P and Q. Here I'm considering between P and when the time equals four. So they're not the same values of, certain, like the final velocity, the velocity at this point is not the same as there. I can't use V equals 28 here 
because I'm considering only these, this point up to this point, and I don't know what the velocity is there. Okay, so of course the time here is 10, the time up to here is 4, and so on. So you don't use the same values. The only value that's the same here is the acceleration, okay, and the initial velocity when it was at P. Once we worked out what that is, which we did here, then we can use that initial velocity because that's the velocity if we're starting from P in both cases, then, you know, that will be the same in both cases, all right? So that's what we had the same. U and A were the same when t time equals 4 and time equals 5. The things that were the same was U and A. What was different was T and S, of course, right? So that's how you deal with such questions. Um, I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of constant acceleration and SUVA equations, um, kinematics can be found in the playlist in this area over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and please do check out the other links in the description for other modules and you know the IGCSE course that I have. Thank you for watching and see you soon.